A team of observers from the Virginia Aquarium and Marine Science Center take off from Norfolk International Airport, flying over Virginia's nearshore and offshore waters that are part of the Navy's Virginia Capes operating area. Over the next six hours, they'll cover a 6,500 square kilometer survey area looking for protected marine animals. The observers conduct these aerial surveys monthly, flying transects through the study area looking for whales, dolphins, and sea turtles. It's an amazing perspective, being able to see this area of the coastline, the ocean, and these animals, and in their habitat is absolutely amazing. The project is funded by the United States Navy in an effort to develop baseline population data for protected species in the Virginia Capes operating area. We have to know what's out there and when it's there and how many are there in order to really start anything else. Getting enough high quality data to track species occurrences and distribution across seasonal and annual variations is a major commitment. So this is where we saw the breaching whales. It's kind of the nature of science in a lot of ways. When you have a lot of uncertainty, it takes quite a while to get the data you need, especially for things that are hard to see. Marine mammal, they spend so much time under the water, it takes you that much longer to study them. Many of the marine species migrate through the waters off Virginia and are only present part of the year. One of the important parts about these surveys is being able to try to catch some of the seasonal movements of animals, especially critically endangered ones like uh, the right whale. Tracking animal movements reliably means good survey design and observing along consistent flight patterns. This shows our survey area right off of the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay. We have 14 transect lines that run east to west. When an animal is sighted, the team breaks the flight track, circling over the animal to collect sighting data and photos. For humpback whales, the photos become an important part of a database, allowing researchers to identify individual whales using unique markings and color patterns, similar to a fingerprint. By comparing sighted whales with the photo database, whales can be tracked in the area over months or even from year to year. These are our humpback whale sightings from January 2016 through December 2017. And this was that, that animal breaching right off of Cape Henry. Sighting data includes not just the various species of whales, dolphins, and sea turtles off the Virginia coast, but the presence of commercial and naval ships as well. These are waters that naval vessels transit through as they're moving to offshore training areas, and also quite a bit of training takes place in this area. Survey data illustrates just how much activity, including both marine animals and vessel traffic, moves through the ocean waters leading to and from Norfolk. To avoid potential impacts to protected species, the Navy has strict mitigation procedures already in place. We have lookouts that are constantly looking for marine mammals, and depending on what activity we're doing, we'll either stop that activity or move it to another place if a marine species is located in the area. Marine scientists once thought that whales were primarily migrating through the area, but research now points to whales not just passing through, but remaining in these waters to forage. One of the really interesting things that we've been documenting recently is three out of the four baleen whale species that we've seen have displayed evidence um, consistent with feeding behavior. We've noticed in the winters when it's much cooler, we see very few whales, and we think that's because there's very little bait in the area. But when it's warmer, above 40 degrees, there's a lot of bait in the area, a lot of birds, and a lot of whales. By comparing this sighting data with water temperatures and other environmental variables, the team gains a better understanding of when, where, and why these species are here. If we collect enough data, it would be great to be able to predict when and where we might see these animals, and that would really be an important step to be able to take. Data from this project and other Navy marine species monitoring projects throughout the Atlantic and Pacific are shared with the scientific community and the general public. We stress peer-reviewed publications and getting all the data out to the public and making it available. We've got a website that all the projects are on. Folks can go in and download the data, look at our reports and things like that. It's part of the Navy's ongoing effort to develop a better understanding of how to avoid potential impacts to the environment. You can put bounds on when the majority of them come through. That gives us a better idea of how we can do our environmental planning, um, hopefully to, to minimize impact.
The more we can learn about them and the more we can understand and predict their behavior, the better stewards we can be for protecting these animals in the future.